Good afternoon guys, so welcome back to our video series. So this afternoon, we are gonna continue with our uh, ESP.NET Core with API using JWT authentication and ESP.NET Core identity. But we are upgrading from .NET Core 3.1 to that needs six. So that needs six is the latest uh, open source framework of Microsoft. So that needs five is out of support already. So we are going to utilize the the new version that needs six. So I have started last night to uh, that needs six. So last night in the first video of the part one for this, we we're able to set up the project as well as we we're able to ma add migration. Uh, create the authentication class to connect to our SQL serving eh, SQL server <laughs> uh, using the entity framework ORM of course. So basically, uh, we are just transferring or upgrading. So number one that we have noticed is that in that .NET six, this is that .NET six now. There's no startup file. So every entry, every dependency injection that we need to, or what we call the middleware, to act in in our in our program is already in the program that stages. So for example, for example, this one, at uh, DBCon is this this our middleware. Uh, yeah, the sugar, and then now uh because we gonna have um. We are going to using ESP.NET for identity system. So uh, yesterday, last night, we were able to create our class, this one, authentication DB context. And we inherit the identity DB context, which is coming from Microsoft ESP.NET for identity entity framework. Or so basically, after that, you can now create a migration. That is why we have our migration here. So the migration will just create the tables in our database and of course the database will be created and the database name is in the connection string here. So that will be created. So we have this authentication db 6.0 and then we injected some of in the program class. So we injected here the SQL server, the add db context. And of course, the in the previous one, the configuration, you have to inject it in the constructor. But in that need 6, it's already in the program that C is. It's part of the builder. So you have here the builder uh, variable is a uh, web application that create builder. So everything is taken care of from here. So if you go to the implementation here, so it's already that need core already create that so it's initialized a new instance of microsoft this with that need core that builder that authentication builder class okay by default for configuration so yeah and you can see that so it's built in in microsoft so we, you didn't have to reinvent the wheel so we are just going to use it and yeah so now when we look at our first first video, so yeah, uh, we gonna create now the I think we create first the registration, but of course we have to create the services. I I think I can just copy this. Uh, actually this is uh, let's try if it works. So can I just copy it to the uh, that is six? So for example, this folder thirty six. Instead of creating, so uh, let's go back to our uh, So this is it. So try to copy it here. Okay. And then we'll open an R that needs six. Show files. 
So you can see the services is here. We don't even have to exclude, it's already included. So let's see if it works. So basically we have the video already in the .NET Core 3.1 for this. So we are just upgrading or uh, transferring it to .NET 6. So basically we created a, a what? This is not the one. Uh, this is the, uh, I'm wrong. We have to open here. So this one, this is the services that we added. So file, so basically it's already, it's already it's not even have to exclude it. Exclude, uh, it's already included. So we have the interface. Uh, of course, the number one that you are going to tackle is the user registration. And then of course we have, uh, yeah, we are locking the, uh, DTO or the view model sir so we have to indicate I mean add it as a reference so we just right click here add project reference and we will browse the existing module in our 3.1 uh, this is the core identity and of course we have the shared be in there so now we are just going to get the DLL all right, so we have installed it here, uh, added it here in the dependency. So it's okay now. Okay, so using shared DM. So the code is in the previous one. So we are already using the DM. All right, so I think this is pretty straightforward because, as I said, this is just an upgrade. So user interface we have here the signature registered as sync and then of course in our in our this one implementation the complete class is still the same what we are missing here extension configuration this is not the way in that needs six we can remove it so I think this is the only part that we need to take care of it because this one is only built. It's already here. Microsoft configuration. So we can use it directly without the I think it's this is cool. And so we are not using the his name fees configuration but it's already here so basically we have to this is straightforward I <laughs> registered the thing I will just go to the register the thing first and let's see if it works okay so this one of course we have to create a uh, thing that changes in the font yeah yeah this one. so basically we are taking the model if not then we're going to return an error and we take the password and then the identity user and then create now if succeeded then uh yeah we generate the word we'll take a look for them here but I think it's okay. No, no problem here. So we're gonna create the authentication controller and the web API and then we test. So basically we can also copy from the previous one. Let's try to do it. So This is the controller. This browser. This is the box. Open. And then this one, we're gonna copy it. And uh, here. So we have to put it in the controller. No, 
macam kan sini ya. So this is that matrix. So see in a controller now. Oh, this is not that matrix. This is that matrix. What? Where's my that matrix? Vision. So this is the that matrix. So I think if we can see the code, I'll make it bigger. So I might just one two three. One two three percent. Okay, that's that's this. I think that's enough. So we have here the controller. Alright, so. So again, this Microsoft extension configuration name is it's not needed. I think it's already built in. Why I can use this yes one without using the name face? So that is new in that matrix one. Okay, so uh, let's take a look on this. Registered. Registered endpoint. So this is the registered endpoint. So debugger um, and we will try to run what will happen. So the word error. So sin rate is not. Alright, so same grid. So I think we need to install the same grid first. No git package, then install package. So, uh, same grid. so same grid is our email uh, used in. Single API is used in sending email. So right, it's installed. So it should be here in our package manager, package folder. So this is a single, and then why is this in an empty? Could not be found missing. This will be again. Then add. Okay, succeed in my error. <laughs> it's cleaning here. So we'll build it again. I think that's, that's good enough. So there's no error. What? What is this? It's not even next to that. Configuration. Uh, yeah, we are going to remove those uh, later on. So there's no error, so we're gonna test it out. Like it in here. So we are now the swagger, so you can see now. There is the authentication endpoint, so you have received password, forget password, confirm email, confirm email, authentication register, but basically it will not function yet. So when we click register, we will try it out. So of course, uh, this is this is application JSON. And it is false. So we have email here, password, confirm password. Oh, uh, yeah. It's a template. We need to execute that. Of course, it will not work. So, yeah. Uh, there's an error because the middleware has not been set up. So that's why I know for it, but this did not work. Okay, so we go back. 
So as you can see in the previous one, as you can see here, we need to inject or configure first the dependency injection. This one, I use our service and then the scope. So this service is a scope. It's a lifetime of I have a. Let's take a look at my query here. Where is it? Not service type. Okay. This is the service type that I would like to let you know. So, yeah, if we are using transcend, transcend services are created by container every time they need to be injected. So, that's how we are going to do it in that message. Well, there are two services add transcend like that. Okay, so if two classes rely on the same dependency and both classes are used during the same, pra same request, created by the container every time they need to be injected. So you use transcend if we want that it will be created every time that it is being injected. But we are going to use scope services for request. So for request, it will be created. It means dependency need to be injected twice in the same request because it's a for request. Singleton services are only created once. All injections receive the same instance. So it's up to us how what, what services type we have to use. So this is. Uh, the service lifetime cycle. Okay, so I think this, uh, yeah, this is the picture of the that needs six, the preload. Uh, so for this to work, we need to add uh, dependency injection. We inject it in the program that says. So see here. I think we can just add here. Builder. That services that add scope. Let me how it's being used. Add transient like that. Oh, builder that services add transient. Oh, it's important. Builder that services that add transient or add scope. We just use add scope. Add scope. Okay. So add scope, which means to say. created ones per request per request okay. we want it per request to be created so we have to choose add scope add scope here and of course what you're going to add is the the interface i use our service yes like that and then of course, the depend, uh, concrete class is user service. So this way, we are not creating an instance of the class. So this is the one who something like they create an instance of the class. So we can be able to access their uh, methods or function. So we need to bring in the name this here. And this one is... This services okay so i guess this will work now mm -hmm. we'll run it because we already injected the middleware so we'll take care of it and we inject it in the constructor in the implementation code so we'll take a look it certainly will give us the result. Oh, okay, that's the problem. 
some services are not able to construct it. Error inscription. Type time scope. What's this a problem here? Unable to resolve services for the Microsoft Identity User Manager while attempting to update it. Core Identity? What? Let me fix it first. So, we are lacking this one, I guess. So let's try it out for the Identity Manager. So this is add identity, then this is identity user, which will be in Microsoft is with that net for identity. Uh, this is how uh, we override because there is an existing there, for example, the card link is 10, the existing then we just need six. That's how we are going to override. And then Actually, so let's try it out. I commented everything and let's see how it works. We cannot have the error, so this is not right. All right, so that's what we are lacking. So I need to comment this. Yes, that's what we are lacking this part. And here, there's some comment. Uh, okay. Yeah. Configuration. I oh, know it's a user service. So I love that. I call this one. I comment it. So the configuration, uh, it's just, this is just basically the same, the 3.1, so uh, I to uncomment this. I just commented it because I, I looked for the problem, but it was not here. So what I miss is something injecting this part the identity user builder services add identity so in our previous one we forgot here before adding the concrete plus this part so that's the that's what happened so i tried to debug commenting some codes but it's not really the issue all right so I think we still have missing something. So, essentially, guys, if you need to learn the details on how it's really created this part, you can watch in my video for the 3.1. Because this part is, I'm just upgrading the framework instead of .NET Core 3.1. I'm using the .NET 6. But the code is just copying it and making some and some adjustment. For example, the number one adjustment that we need to say is that this one. This is in the this is how being defined in that need six. You have to put it in a program file and the builder variable, which is this part, uh this one, web application that create builder. So in the previous one, it is just like here that you just call the services from the this one configure your services method and just a variable services in a startup phase class. But in the .NET six, it's already in the program file. So it's just the that is just the major changes. All the other code is just the same. So from here the user service. It's just the same with existing one. So I think I have, uh, yeah, I commented this part for the security tokens and this part. So I guess it's okay now. So let's run it.
Mm -hmm. So, guys, we have now the swagger. So, it was configured it there. So, let's try to register here. You just need to try it out. And then, before we're using the postman to fix it, but in that .NET 6, it's already built in on swagger. But anyway, you can uncomment it in the program file if you don't want to use the swagger. And you can use the postman. So you just uncomment this part. But I guess this is nice, the swagger. So it's, by default, it's already here. So we are just going to... And it also gives you a template already. So for example, this one. Uh, let's try to register. Okay, is that is be the account uh, password? We have the requirement here. There, the capital letter small and like that. So we will not just receive a string because we have validation there. Two, four, five. Okay. And this is now confirm password. That's the message. This is our register, so we need confirm password. Let's test right clicks again. It's three. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. Let's test for it. Alright, let's try. Alright, so we are now in the registered. So let's try it to debug. It will go to our user manager, user manager class. And it will check the token, it will create. It's downloading. Alright, it's succeeded. And it will create the token. And then it will send an email. So, but you cannot deny. So, what is this? I think this is the same grid. So, this is in grid. Some services and several states. Let's try to look at the. Alright, so we have a, we don't have the API key yet. So that's one thing that we need to add. Alright, so this is the hot reload here. Why it's not? I don't know how it works in hot reload, so you are not going to uh, run and run again so you'll be changes it till that's reload but i don't know how it works here so anyway so i think it, we can also have the secret key here uh manage user secret oh uh, yeah it's still here so manage user secret this is so important new feature of that net framework that need six or even in that net core it's already have so all along, we've been used to put uh, some configuration files in the app seeking, but this one, when you deploy it, it, anyone can check it, anyone can get it. So that is why there is a new version that it will be in the managed user six suite. And when you deploy it, no one can decode it, and no one can get it easily because it's already. Uh, it's created in secret.json, but that secret.json will not be available in the in your files like this. It, it, it cannot be seen here. But when you right click the project and uh, we look at the config, and I mean here the project.js. Project that C is here. So if you write in this, where is it? Where is the uh, is is here? So this one, I think this is the solution. 
Ngayon yung open it. Ano ba sumusun? It's the... What is that? Resume. Ano ba sumusun? Ano ba sumusun? Ah, this is not the, this is the documentation. So, how to date from this screen here? Yeah. Then, uh, I will, I will go back it later where it's stored. So, I, I say that, I think it's the package. Uh, that I can see that. It's, uh, What is that? It's So anyway, I forgot to restore, but this is not easily condescend. When you deploy in production, even here, you cannot see a secret here. But when you when you right click in the application, you can have this one manage user secret, and it will display. And I don't know how it's being done by Microsoft, but it's being hidden. So anyway, we have to copy it here. So if you don't want to see, don't let someone see your settings. Don't put it in the app setting anymore. You put it in your secret key. I manage user secret. Okay, so like this, but we access that the same as what we did in the app setting. So basically here, I just put the uh, Setting files here that need to be changed because, for example, this one, if I deploy it to production, I need to change the uh, production setting. If not, so I will use uh, put it in the secret at this one. So, yeah, I, I did not see the secret that key that something is on here is being hidden. All right, so that's the missing one. So let's try again. But we already registered it, but it will, it was not sending an email. Okay, I'm just checking. <laughs> All right, so we registered again. Try it out. Um, Let's see if it will give us error the same way. Got an error here. The details user did not create, so it's for over error. Uh, username is already taken, so it's meant to say we are able to register it. So let's try to register the new one, or let's just delete that here from our database. Because I want to have the email notification so that we can confirm that uh, it's a valid email. So after the registration, it will send to the email to check if that really a valid email. All right, so so we are just opening our SQL Server. I'll take a look if why is not look.
search up for the it is in the uh, yeah yeah let me try to look at in my uh, so this is the SQL server so we're gonna open our authentication db So we just delete the existing delete from the user and then here we go we can register again so register uh, we already have that so we just execute and it's going to our API and there you go User created successfully. Success is true. Expired it. Nala. What is it? Nala. Nah, expired it. Okay, so let's check our email if we receive it. Oh my god. So I have not received the email yet. Uh, but you may see in our database, it's already registered. So it's here. This that comes so email confirm is false. So when we click, once we receive the email and we confirm it, it is will be true. So it means to say that the email has been confirmed. So let's click again the email. No email yet. Where are you? Why you are not sending? I guess there's a problem with our sync grid or been traffic it's been black uh, oh we have the sender i think that will have an error because we don't have the sender yet not have the sender email uh, just like here so we should have this sender email I think it's the one that is missing up here. Oh, where's your heart? Ah, heart reload. I, yeah, just you just put here and it, uh, yeah, so there. then oh, how do we use the heart reload in that net six? Well, anyway, I think this is it. Okay, guys, so let's try to try it again. We can have an email. This email is not sending, so maybe the problem is this no sender. So, let's delete it again here. And then try it out the same. Same. Um, let's see this now. Let's try it out. Try it out. And then. Uh, oh, it's done. Yeah, we need to type again. It's not saved. This solder is not saving. Unlikes and postman, it's all a history. So you don't need to retype it again. 
no problem. This value. It's not saving history. See in a second. Alright, so we have to connect it. So again, to go into our So let's bring it now. So if we take in our table, it should be here. Okay, we have one record, but in our email. Oh, we got it. So this is now our email. All right. So we need to confirm it. Oh. The problem here, I think we have messed it our API. Okay, guys, so now this is, uh, yeah, <laughs> for and this is for now, then because uh, it's too long now. Then we will continue the next part and the next series. So Please subscribe if you like this video and hit the bell button so that you will be notified in the previous previous <laughs> I mean in the next video. So happy learning and comment out uh, you have something to ask for more clarification or you have something to contribute that would be much very much appreciated. So happy learning again and bye bye.